Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of What's on My Desk and today I bring you the Battle of the Minute Repeaters. That's right, Battle of the Minute Repeaters. I did an episode or two on independent watchmakers and uh, you guys have always asked me to do some more of that and uh, obviously in order to do that you have to have some of this stuff in stock to actually be able to show it to you. So today I actually brought two independents when one is Jean Dunand and another one is Sven Anderson, probably one of the most famous independent watchmakers out there, if not the most respected, right? Uh, and then alongside that, I brought a Autumn RPG minute repeater, Turbion, a Corum minute repeater, which I actually showed you in an episode before, and a Concord minute repeater, Turbion. That's right, I said Concord minute repeater, Turbion. It was Concord's way to show that, hey, we can make complicated watches just the same back in the 90s. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of these watches first, but if we talk about them, then I'm going to set them off one by one, allowing you guys to be the judge and vote on what you think is the best sounding minute repeater from this. And it's not necessarily based on brand. I'm an avid fan of turbines and minute repeaters. I have plenty of them in stock at any given time. I have a few more downstairs. In fact, I even put one on my wrist. I just sort of pick them based on shapes and an odd shape in the case of a Jean Dunant, a traditional shape in case of Audemars Piguet, somewhat of an odd shape with quorum, and also materials. I have gold, I have platinum, I have titanium. I have a white gold oddly shaped watch and I have a white gold traditionally shaped watch. All those things are actually going to affect the sound of the, the minute repeater outside, obviously, is designed and how well they're made. But nevertheless, I'll let you guys be the judge. But first, let me jump into some watches, right? First up is the Peace Unique Jean Dunant Minute Repeater Perpetual. Um, Jean Dunant Shabaka is what it's called. Shabaka! Jean Dunant as a company uh, was very short-lived. Right? And these things were produced by the talented watch designer Christophe Claret, who now has his own brand. Right, uh, It was kind of inspired by the 20th century Swiss Art Deco movement, if there is such a thing. I always thought that Art Deco mainly came from the United States. This was Jean Dunant's uh, probably most popular and notable model. It's kind of got this neo-Egyptian theme, if you ask me, if you, if you look at this watch. Uh, briefly to talk about this watch, uh, again, minute repeater perpetual calendar, but perpetual calendar done in a very unique way in forms of cylinders here. Another cool thing to note here is you have, it has a couple of locking mechanisms here. What that allows you to do is it allows you to lock one barrel while adjusting the other. The last thing anybody wants to do is adjust uh, the day of the week and then the dates start changing and something is out of whack and then you, you get all upset but what this allows you to do is sort of so right now they're in lock position and if I let's say I unlock this guy I can move the day wheel together with this wheel but if I lock this guy and I use the opposite button you'll note the dates of the days of the week just changing independently of the other one, which was a feat all of its own. I'm not going to play the minute repeater just yet. Again, piece unique in white gold, extremely heavy watch, extremely large watch, very deco Egyptian design. Oh, last thing about the Jean Dunant price, this watch retail for approximately half a million dollars. What is the value of it today? Pretty much what one is willing to pay for it. You get a serious collector out there that appreciates the inner workings, that follows uh, Claret and appreciates the work that he does, he will pay a price. There's really no price tag that can be put on that watch. It was one of a kind, no longer exists. So you tell me what you think the watch is worth, right? What one is willing to pay for it. Moving on to AP, and I think I may have shown this watch before. This is AP's Minute Repeater Turbion Chronograph, part of their Grand Complication line. This watch also retails for half a million dollars, actually 497,000 and change your traditional beautifully decorated movement in a Jules Audemars case on a deploying buckle. Watch is very understated, it's very classy, no fancy thrills in the likes of this uh, Jean Dunant. If you put the two side by side, it's like night and day, right? But uh, I, I think I have discussed this watch in the past, so I'm not gonna get into much details outside of just showing you the watch. Got your Turbion at six o'clock, and a repeater traditionally on the side, um, <clears throat> and, your set, and your chronograph at three o'clock, again, the back of this watch is just absolutely stunning. You get to see the inner workings of the watch. You can see the gongs of the minute repeater. And again, I'll set that off in just a moment. Another watch that I brought was the Quorum Admiral's Cup minute repeater. I'm not sure if it was this one I showed you, if it was the minute repeater Turbion, but nevertheless, one of the things that I love about this is the fact of how the watch seemingly disappear because there's, so, there's the traditional 12 angles of an admiral's cup, right? But because of the shiny finishes on pretty much every facet of this watch, it seemingly disappears and all you see is this beautiful skeletonized movement both from the front and the back. 
Again, manual wind. The, the gongs of the minute repeater is actually visible in the front here. And again, when I set that off, you guys will see this is done in titanium. And this is one of the reasons I brought this watch. Retail price, uh, $277,000. The fate of this quorum is much like the fate of every other quorums. You should be able to pick this watch up for way less than half price out in the market. Next up is a yellow gold oldie but a goodie from Sven Anderson. Sven Anderson, one of the most respective and notable guys out there from the world of independent watchmakers. And what I have here from him is a perpetual calendar minute repeater. Again, it's a one-off piece. Most of the stuff that he makes is one-off, but let me just talk about him for a second here. He was born in Denmark in 1942, took a four-year apprenticeship as a watchmaker. With his diploma from uh, the Danish watchmaker school, he uh, integrated in the Royal Technology Institute of Copenhagen. So he took off to Switzerland in the 60s, early 60s. He basically wanted to see how world's best watches were made, and that's why he went there. He worked at Gubelin Luzerne in their service or after service center, and then he joined Gubelin uh, in the mid 60s. And he was responsible for shop service because of his excellent knowledge of languages. In 1969, he made the famous bottle clock. For those of you guys who know Sven Anderson, he was the guy that made that bottle clock. And if you can pop a picture of it up. After that uh, bottle clock, he was known as the watchmaker of the impossible. That's what they called him, right? Sort of like the Houdini of the watch world, I guess. In 1969, Patek Philippe took interest in Sven. He worked for Patek Philippe for nine or 10 years. In the late 70s, when he left, uh, he decided to start his own career as an independent watchmaker. He actually started uh, his business by manufacturing watch cases for Italian collectors. Once they were super satisfied with his work, they actually started commissioning watches from him, piece uniques, if you will, in the likes of the watch that I just showed you. He didn't just gain recognition and respect from uh, watch collectors, he also gained a lot of respect from his fellow watchmakers. In 1985, he started AHCI, which I am not going to tell you in Swiss, basically it's the Academy of Independent Watchmakers. If I tell you that in Swiss, I'm going to mangle it anyway, right? This is a guy that trained Frank Miller. This is a guy that trained Felix Baumgartner, Felipe Quinton, just to name a few. This is a guy that holds the Guinness World Book of Records for the smallest calendar watch ever made. It's the size of a match head. He's also the guy that created the thinnest world time. And I think in the mid 90s, uh, his world time watch was awarded to be the thinnest world time watch in the world as well. I don't think there has been one done thinner since then. Nothing has changed since uh, the late 70s. Uh, Sven Anderson is still an independent watchmaker. Anderson Geneva is the company, has two partners. He is the watchmaker and he has a manager that, that manages all other aspects of the business. You can uh, still see Sven Anderson. I think it's in Hall 4 in Basel on the second or third floor where all AHCI watchmakers usually hang out together as a group, Bianchi Holder and the likes. Um, <clears throat> Thomas Pressure and, and all those guys. Anyway, I just wanted to give you a little bit more information about the watchmaker uh, and the company and the history just because Sven Anderson is certainly deserving of that outside of just showing you the watch. And last but not least, uh, he has a Concord watch. This is, this is, again, a piece unique. This thing is in platinum, and this is one of the reasons I brought it. This was Concord's way to show, hey, we don't just make inexpensive timepieces, we're also a hot horology house. We can, make ex we can make complicated timepieces, and lo and behold, they made a grand comp just the same. This is a Turbion minute repeater. As you see here, power reserve indicator at 12 o'clock. This is unmistakably the Saratoga design. You guys are familiar with those watches that are being sold till this day. Manual one, again, piece one of one. It's one of those things that companies bring to the major uh, watch shows such as Basel SIHAs to show the world that, hey, this is who we are. And most of them do this in the hopes of finding a client right there and then, much like in the Jean Dunant case. The Sven Anderson was probably manufactured for a particular client and then went and resold it and uh, you came to me via another dealer, so I don't really know the history of who this watch was ever made for. But anyway, let's get to the test, right? I am going to set off the minute repeaters one at a time, starting with the Jean Dunant. So pay attention here, rewind the video if you have to. Now, for the sake of it being fair, I'm gonna turn the watch to where the gongs are so you can hear it more clear. Of course, it's not exactly how it would sound on your wrist because the gongs are in the back, but nevertheless, for this test, we'll do that. Jean Dunant, white gold, sort of an odd shape and a big watch. Let's go to a traditional meter repeater from Audemars Piguet, which is in a very traditional gold. It's also in white gold, but the case is very, very traditional on this one. <laughs> 
There you have it, AP Jules Turbion Mini Repeater. Let's go to the Titanium Quorum. Now, if you remember from the episode I did before, there's seemingly no way to set off the Mini Repeater. Wait a minute, where's the thing that I pull? What happens? Well, this one is done a little bit differently. This one is done by twisting the bezel. Ready? You have it, the quorum in somewhat of an odd shape in titanium. Let's go to cement. Sven Anderson, last but not least, let's do the Concord. And this is in platinum. So we have white gold, odd shape, white gold, your traditional shape, somewhat of an odd shape titanium, traditional shape uh, yellow gold, and a platinum. Last but not least, I might as well set off the mid repeater on my hand. And what am I? I'm wearing a watch that I've showed you guys before. This is the Jaeger LaCultra Antoine Master Minute Repeater in titanium. And let me set this off. And this is, by the way, serving as what I'm wearing on my wrist, just FYI. So let's hear the Jaeger. And there's the repeater on my wrist. So guys, I know you probably won't be able to do this first go around, rewind this part of the video a couple of times, listen to all the beautifully chiming mini repeaters from a slew of manufacturing, including a couple of independents that you guys always ask me to talk about. Let me know your thoughts and vote below. Jean Dunant, AP, Quorum, Sven Anderson, Concord, or the Jaeger that's on my wrist. After you do that, as always, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you're already not a subscriber, and I'll see you guys next week for more watch reviews and other videos. Oh,